exactly what communists have always done. It's good to see the man doing what's done on the campuses of America, American universities on a national level so you could see what your poor children have to have to put up with. All right, let's move on to other topics. There's an interesting article in the San Francisco newspaper, which I never, ever expected to see. Never in a million years that I think it would even be published. But I learned today it came out of the Wall Street Journal. And, of course, Phil had to run away because he knew the next question would have gotten him into a little hot water with those who control him. They probably didn't even want him to come on the show because he's no friend of mine. Believe me, he's uh, part of the uh, other side of the aisle. Let's put it to you that way. But, hey, different strokes for different folks. Let's go to the callers. KCMO, Marianne out of Kansas City. Marianne, what's on your mind? Oh, yes. I'm a post-abortive mother, and I left the Catholic Church for 33 years. I'm a revert. I come back in 07. And all I see our church and this pope uh, scares me. It reminds me of Hitler in the day when Hitler went into the churches, took down the crosses, and put up the SS flag, how he took the Bible out and put the manifesto on the um, altars. I don't see our Pope talking about what a priest to do with homosexual union. I do not call it a marriage. And about Islam, that they don't believe in God and how cruel they are to women. I uh, don't hear him talking about euthanasia like they were trying to pass in California under this. Well, they just passed it, by the way. That, that they found time to do, the degenerates in Sacramento. The degenerates in Sacramento found time to pass assisted suicide. Uh, my my answer to that is I only wish they followed their own advice. They passed it at midnight the uh, last Friday. They, by by one uh, one one a.m. Saturday morning they should have all should have followed the law. But uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. I get it. Why is it that the atheist left seems to be in favor of the sale of baby body parts, massive abortion, assisted suicide, and yet they defend mass murderers? They're against the death penalty. What is this about their psyche? What is it about this demented thing called liberalism? This illness, this mental illness that wants to rush itself to death and wants babies to be chopped up and sold as body parts, and yet they defend mass murderers. What is about this mental disorder, Marianne? What you're saying is you wish the Pope, you wish the Pope addressed more about it, I think is what you're saying. Uh, abortion is the severance of the soul of God. I know. I experienced it. Unfortunately, I had five abortions. Now I speak out uh, in a peaceful, loving way, and I try to help post-abortive mothers and fathers. I get little support. I speak once a year on the United States Supreme Court steps uh, during the March. All right. I, I hear you. I appreciate it. So let's go to 30 seconds or less, and we'll go to Patrick on WBAP in Dallas. The show is heard in almost... 260 stations. Patrick on BAP in Dallas. Thank you for listening. What's your point? Dr. Simmons, uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I'm also a devout Catholic, but uh, I do tend to agree with, uh, with your assessment of our Pope. I may have a little bit lighter view. Uh, I may not have uh, the same strong rhetoric that you use, but, uh, but I do tend to, uh, to agree with you. Um, I was a big uh, Pope Francis supporter when he first came out because my view was that he was being I thought he was just very politically astute and was being very sly and was trying to bring in folks and get the attention of the the liberals and the Catholic haters if you will and get their attention by making some of the statements well let me interject so let, let me interject so there's no confusion I'm a, I'm a Catholic lover I have been on radio for 21 years. I have defended uh, the Pope who was Pope during Hitler's time, who the left smeared. I have defended Catholicism against attacks during the priest uh, molestation scandal. But I will not defend communism. I don't care whether it comes out of Bernie Sanders' mouth, Obama's mouth, or the Pope's mouth. It's all exactly the same rhetoric. Now, you're right. You're right, Dr. Savage. Uh, and, I, and I get myself in a little bit of trouble with some of my friends and family and my pastor and whatnot. Well, of course, because they are, they are adherents of a faith and they believe that you have to worship the man, not the faith. But the Pope is only a man. He is not God. And there are flawed men. And then, then there are some very flawed men. And then there are some very deceptive men. Okay, you know, so don't assume that just because a man has a name or, a, or an office that he's somehow better than everybody else. He could be worse than everybody else. 
as we have learned through history. Position, not Some of the worst people rise to the highest places. I don't have to name them. What is everyone who rises to the top somehow divinely better than the rest of us? Okay, Trump says make America great again. Bernie Sanders says make America hate again. Get out your Bernie Sanders hat. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. Time is 55 minutes after the hour. Let's go to MichaelSavage.com, the home of Borders Language Culture. Top right, Bill Clinton's office check with the State Department while his lady ran it on whether he could give a paid speech to a group with uh, ties to Iran. Like that little story, huh? It's nice to have a wife in the government. You know, it's not the only couple like that. I mean, you have Diane Feinstein, runs a big Senate committee. Her husband's a businessman. You've got Mrs. Pelosi in Congress. Her husband's a business. Not, not, did, I, did I say anything's wrong? It's just the way things are in America. It's a seamless connection. You run your wife for office and you run your business. That way you get a little help from your friends. It goes back to the 60s. You get high with a little help from your friends, you get by with a little help from your friends. That's why I call it government zero. No borders, no language, no culture. Incidentally, for those of you who are Pope watching, to see how a man like this, an ex-bouncer, could become... Uh, a, a pope and then espouse naked Marxism, which is opposed to everything the Catholic Church stands for, and then no, who knows nothing about science, espouse the equivalent of the Lysenko view of, of, of heredity, which I discuss in great detail in Government Zero. For those of you who read, I wouldn't expect anyone in San Francisco to read. They only read the newspapers and the blogs. But for those of you who still read books, Government Zero will be another New York Times bestseller, as sure as I'm standing here. I've had eight of them, by the way. They don't sell in San Francisco. They're not allowed in San Francisco. In fact, my great novels about San Francisco are not, are not allowed to be read here or talked about here because I'm so brutally honest. But nevertheless, the nonfiction book, Government Zero, No Borders, no, no Language, No Culture, has an entire chapter entitled Lenin's Pope. 8,000 words about Lenin's Pope, his background, his foreground, and where he's come from, where he's trying to take the world. Lenin's Pope, all in, Government Zero, on Amazon.com. I'll be Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. I think people can trust me to fight for them and to fight for their families. I have a long track record of standing up and really working hard to help people <laughs> solve their problems, to have better lives. I did it as a first lady. I did it as a senator. I did it as secretary of state. I would do it again as president. I want to be the so president good. who solves the big problems, works to yeah, keep us safe uh -huh. in the world, deals right, with terrorism, right, right. climate sure. change. But I also sure. want to be the president who helps families figure out what they do about those problems that keep them up at night. Sounds like Hillary really wants to be a late night talk Are show. You sorry? She wants to figure out what they do about those problems that keep them up at night. Like, what does that mean? She's going to solve, she's going to help men with impotence problems? What's she going to do about government Viagra? What do you mean help them with problems that keep them up at night? We know that her campaign is over. She's finished. She's flamed out. And we know that the rising star on the left is the most overtly stupid candidate they could ever have picked. And it is Bernie Sanders, who is Barack Obama without any finesse. Bernie Sanders is a naked Barack Obama who just doesn't think because he can't think. That's why he is what he is. But he shows you the naked stupidity of the radical left. 
And that's what we've been talking about. Phone number here is 855-407-282. We've touched other topics. We've talked about uh, the weather in L.A., how God struck L.A. with rain, threw the warmest into a fit. Because that to put their warmest agenda aside with the mudslides and the rain. And uh, we talked about the Pope, Lenin's Pope, 8,000 words in my forthcoming 100,000-word book called Government Zero. Very important book because if anyone owns the topic of illegal immigration, it's me. It's not the other malarkey throwers out there who are Johnny-come-latelys to the issue. I was trying to warn you about borders being broken back in 94. One bestseller after another were about borders, language, and culture. And uh, the sin qua non of all my books, the magnus opus is Government Zero, and that's out next month. It's coming up fast. Now, you won't read about it on any website. Maybe World Net Daily will cover it. Maybe Newsmax. That's about it. As you well know, I am persona non grata. As you well know, I am banned on all websites. I'm banned on all television shows. And somehow, little old me survives with a little help from my friends. Yes, I get by with a little help from my friends. And I do get high with a little help from my friends because I get very high in this radio show. It's the highest three hours of my day. The other 21 hours are horrible. Terrible, filled with arthritic pain, fears, doubts, loneliness, sadness, questions of mortality, bad food, indigestion, pyorrhea, you name it. <laughs> All of the vicissitudes of life that everyone else faces. But the three hours a day that I'm on the radio, uh, I fly like an eagle. So welcome to the uh, eagle's nest, the savage nest. That's a joke for those who know. I'm just doing it to provoke them a little bit. And here we are. If you want to call the show, the phone number is 855-407-282. We have some good sound. We have some good uh, articles. Now Obama's pushing student aid for illegal aliens, even though there are federal prohibitions against it. He doesn't want to lose a voter anywhere he tries. And I think he ought to really just sign up everyone in Mexico and China and give them little red books to go with it then for sure Hillary Clinton could win that way because no other way she could win. Sanders on Liberty University speech, I don't try to convince evangelicals about my view on abortion. Abortion. Abortion rights. Abortion. I don't want to I don't want to ridicule him today. We'll use these tomorrow. I'm not in a Bernie Sanders mood. Here's something that Trump said that I find interesting. It's controversial. Let's play clip 13 and see what the audience thinks about it. We 13. Want Let's hear it. People to be in our country legally, legally. And we want great people too. We want people of achievement. If you go to Harvard or Stanford or the Wharton School of Finance or any of these schools or Yale and you're the top in your class, you graduate, you want to stay in the United States and you want to have your career here. You can't. They throw you out. They put you back in China. They send you back to Mexico. They said, those are the people. We need those people. We need them in Silicon Valley. We need them in Manhattan. We need them in Dallas. We need them. Now, there's more to it. It says, why are we throwing them out? He says, we are throwing them out even though they want to be here. That was the rest of the soundbite. Well, I'm not so sure I agree with him because this is the rhetoric of Silicon Valley. This is what Silicon Valley wants, which is cheap labor. I mean, don't make the mistake, any mistake about it. Sure, if you're going to make a differential of what kind of legal immigrants you want, you want edu educated legal immigrants. I mean, no one would argue with that. Or you could do what Canada did and establish a minimal amount of money that you invest in order to become a citizen. That's fine. But it's way past the time when a radical socialist writes, give us your tired, you're poor, and you're hungry, and they slap it on the Statue of Liberty. I explained to you that that was put on the Statue of Liberty around 1904 when there was no welfare state. They came here to work uh, in factories, by and large. There was no welfare waiting for the tired, the poor, and the hungry. They came here to, to work their behinds off, as my ancestors did, period. We didn't take them in like a bunch of bums to sit around in an apartment and get government handouts. So uh, it's a little different than give me your tired, you're poor, and you're hungry. Emma, Emma, Emma Lazarus wrote that. I believe she was a radical lesbian feminist, incidentally, of her time. Oh, yeah. Yes, nothing new under the sun. You know, there's something I don't understand, which is why is it that people who are gay generally are oriented towards socialism? How does that work? 
What do they think? Do they treat it better in socialist countries? Where? Which, which socialist country treats gays better? Uh, the 